Hey everybody, welcome to Rudimentality's Rude How To's. My name is Tanner Bergerson and I'm going to be explaining the tenor basics. So the first thing you're going to want to think about for tenor drumming is the zones. And they're important because they affect the way it sounds. So if we hit in the center, it's going to be very thuddy and dead sound. It's going to die away really fast. And if we hit towards the rim, it's going to be very thin and tinny. But if we find the center of each of those points, it'll kind of combine those sounds um, to create a more full, rich sound with the tenor speaking in the, tune, in the pitch that it is tuned to. Um, and that is the same around any of the drums. So we want to have like a nice two inch distance between the rims. And you're always going to want to find the zone that's closest to your body. So you're not going to play way out here, right? You're going to play to the closest area because you don't want to use too much energy carrying these 50 pound drums. So the last zone that we didn't talk about is the Spock, and you can either have one or two Spocks. Um, we're always going to want to hit in the center of both of them to get the full sound, the fullest sound that we can out of them, because when they're uh, eight inches or six inches, it's not big enough of a drum for that two inch rule to really apply. You can hit it anywhere on the drum, and it sounds pretty much the same, but we're just going to want to stick for the center. Now it's time to talk about moving around the drum and how we do that. So first things first, when we come up to play the drums, we're going to want to stick with something called home bass. So it's a place um, over one and two, right? We have one, two, three, and four, which correspond with the size of the drum. Um, one being the smallest, four being the largest, and then we have our shot or Spock drum. Um, so home bass over one and two. And it's gonna be closest to any of our drums that we're gonna play. And um, before we start moving around, we're gonna to wanna to talk about how to have zones on one drum. So if we move over to two, we're gonna to wanna to leave enough space for our sticks not to hit each other, right? And that's the same for any of these drums out here. But it's a little different um, when we get to four or three on uh, these outside drums. So if I'm playing on the four drum, which is on my left side, my left hand is gonna be just the same way as my two. I'm just gonna move it out a little bit. But the three, or the right hand, um, is gonna to wanna to relax a little bit and come a little bit closer, right? Instead of trying to stay on that same zone and push out over here, we're gonna to wanna to relax it a little bit and bring it back, which is the same way with the three. So three is our right hand, is the same, and then our left hand is just going to relax a little bit back into that playing zone. Alright, so here's an exercise uh, classically referred to as slow fast. It's one that helps move around the drum as well as get familiar with your zones. Um, here we go. So with slow fast, we start out on the three, um, and we play three notes to start off. One, two, three. And then as we move over, we play two notes on one, two notes on two, one, two, one, two, and then we play three on four, one, two, three. And then when we go back over, it's the same thing. Two notes on two, two notes on one. One, two, one, two, and then three notes on three to finish it out. One, two, three. And then that, you just continue it all the way throughout until you get four patterns, um, too slow and too fast. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is how to do crossovers. 
This is something all quad drummers love uh, because it's really flashy and it looks really hard to do when really it's no uh, harder than playing on one surface. Um, the most mentioned or the most played crossover is going to be on three and four during big impact points, right? Um, and if I pause in this crossover position, um, you can see that the zones still apply, right? If I was playing a double stop on three and four, I want a nice straight approach to the drum. And the same thing when I bring my left hand over, how it's a little relaxed, that's going to be the same in the crossover. It's the same over on this side, right? It's a little relaxed. It's going to be the same position on a crossover. One thing to also note is my wrists are at the same uh, plane, so that I'm playing the same way as I would on one surface, right? My right hand's not any higher, or my left hand's not any lower, or vice versa if I crossed over, right? We want to keep those on the same plane. So now we can move to different drums, so if I move the right hand to two, it'll be the same way, right? We want to keep on the same plane, or left hand to one, keep it on the same plane. But if we go over to one and two, um, we can play at the wrists um, if we want a more full sound at a slower tempo, or we can cross at the fulcrum. And this runs into a problem of hitting six, which could be avoided by just lifting up a little bit. Because normally when we're going to cross at the fulcrum, it's something very fast that we just want to get out of the way really quick. Um, and crossing at the fulcrum doesn't just apply to one and two. You can also move it to any drums that just have a rim separating them, right? Any combination. So, now that we've talked about zones, moving across the drums, and crossovers, you can put all three of those things together and play something like this.